Hello, welcome to Boffy Threads, the home of happy stitching. In this video, we're going to look at tapestries. Some of our kits are suitable for pictures, but the majority are designed with cushions in mind. Let's take a look inside this Poppy Field tapestry kit. On the first page of your instructions, there is a table that lists the tapestry wool colours and their symbols. Inside contains detailed instructions how to complete your design. The picture is full colour printed on the tapestry canvas. We use a 10 or a 12 count canvas. This is 10, which means the holes are slightly larger. You can work your design just from this colour picture here, but we do also include a chart, which you may like to refer to for more detailed areas. In fact, some people prefer to work purely from the chart, in which case you can turn your canvas over and work on the blank side. Often, the main background colour is provided as a hank. Wool is also provided in skeins and sorted on a thread card. You may have some empty holes on your thread card where the colour has been provided as a skein. Or you may have a skein of a colour with extra lengths on this card. Finally, you may have some stranded cotton to add any extra backstitch detailing. This is our William Morris Strawberry Thief design, which is worked on a slightly finer 12 count canvas. We recommend that you use some type of frame to work your design. This is a scroll or roller frame, and there are bands of webbing going across the top and bottom. Simply take a strong thread, tie a knot in the end, and work large running stitches across each edge. It's really important to correctly attach it as it is done here, because you'll see that as you roll it up, the design is inside the rollers and protected. Otherwise, it would go over the top and would rub as you were stitching. It's a good idea to work the picture first and then add the background. It's also preferable to work the paler colours first. So, let's start right in the middle with this flower here. It's a really good idea to add snippets of wool to the colour blocks down the side of your design. It helps greatly when you're trying to identify which colour to use. So, here we are. Tighten up our wing nuts, get the canvas nice and taut, and off we go. In your instructions you'll see there are two different techniques of starting off and two different ways of working your tapestry. Here we're going to use the knot method to start off. You just tie a knot in the end and then decide where you're going to want to start stitching. Count back about an inch along and then come down from the front to the back here and pull your wool through so you're left with the knot on the front. And then you can start stitching. Here we're using the half cross stitch, which is exactly the same as working in cross stitch, just working the first diagonal. On the back, it leaves a small vertical stitch. As you see, we have two white stitches and then the color on the canvas shows we need to use a salmon wool. So we'll just leave a gap here of one stitch before carrying on with the white. While we're securing our thread, we have to make sure that the vertical stitch on the back is being worked over that stitch we laid down at the beginning. This technique has the advantage of being easy, uh, it's quick to work, and it uses less wool than the other option that we're going to show you. The disadvantage though is that it's a bit hard to keep a nice even finish and does, it doesn't cover the canvas so well. Also it's not nearly so hard wearing so it's not really suitable for cushions or upholstery but would work fine for a picture. So when you've worked right along to your knot you simply cut the knot off and your wool is fastened in place. You just carry on stitching. This time we're going to use tent stitch and start off in a slightly different way. 
we come up from the back to the front where we want to start working, leaving a tail of a few centimetres on the back. Again, we make a short diagonal on the front, but this time we're going to make a long diagonal on the back, ready to come up in position for our next stitch. I'm going to miss out one now for our salmon stitch to go into later. And again, a short diagonal on the front and a long one on the back. We're trying to catch that tail of wool as we work to secure it as we go. Tent stitch is a little more awkward to work and it does use more wool. There's plenty in the kit to allow for this, however. It gives a better coverage to the canvas and is more suitable for cushions and upholstery. When you're getting towards the end of a piece of wool, simply go through to the back and on the back of the canvas, run it through a few of the stitches to secure it. And cut the end off really short. You can actually start off and finish off any future colours by using this technique as well. As we said, we recommend that you use a lighter colour first. So here we could work the white and then we could work the salmon. But we'd avoid working the background navy because there's a danger otherwise that you might draw some fibres from the navy into the paler colour walls, which wouldn't look good. Here we have one of our finished designs. It's been worked in tent stitch. You can see the long diagonal stitches on the back. So it's nice and hard wearing, ready to be made up into a cushion. You might find that the canvas has distorted slightly as you've worked. Give it a light steam iron. But if this doesn't do the trick, then look in our instructions and you'll see about blocking your design. In your instructions, you will also find information about finishing services and the backing kits we have on offer. These are available in a large variety of colours and the kit contains a velvet backing with a zip insert and a matching piping edge. So, whether you want to complement your shabby chic style or exude an air of classical elegance, we have the cushion for you. Happy stitching! If you have any questions, please get in touch. You can give us a ring or send us an email. We also have a very friendly Facebook group where you can share your stitching stories.